It's no secret that I like Vim. I think it's one of the best and most efficient text editors. I encourage people to use it, not just to speed up their own text edits, but also to reduce application sprawl since it's pre-installed on most Unix-based operating systems and it can be used from a TTY and it can be used over SSH, so it removes the need to have that duality of a GUI-based text editor and a terminal-based text editor. Now, despite Vim being such an elite text editor, it doesn't really come out of the box that way. There's a few things that people might think are limitations and maybe even bugs in the text editor that would make them say, oh, Vim is stupid, it can't do this right, it can't do that right. Uh, but there are ways to resolve these things. So the first thing is the bulk pasting of text. Um, so technically, Vim has many different clipboards that are called registers. And typically, if you want to paste from the system clipboard, uh, the way that you would do that is with shift insert. But if you're pasting thousands of lines of text, then it can take a while. Like here, I'll just show you. Uh, I'm going to paste in, I think about 13,000 lines of text roughly. So we can see this takes a little while to do. I'm able to talk and say several things as it goes. And there we go, we've got it in. Um, so, you know, this obviously took a while and this actually scales uh, as far as how long it takes with the more text that you're pasting in. Like if I was to paste in 130,000 lines of text, then it's going to take at least 10 times longer. Uh, so what gives with these long paste times? Well, part of it, is because Vim creates a swap file for your current document that you have open. And, you know, this can be really useful. Um, it actually helps because it stores the changes that you've made in the buffer. So if Vim or your computer were to crash, uh, that would allow you to recover those changes. And it also helps avoid multiple instances of Vim from editing the same file. Uh, now, that is especially useful on a multi-user system, like if you had a server with several people that might be changing files. Um, but if you're not on a multi-user multi system uh, and you don't really think that you need a swap file, you know, maybe you've got a UPS or you just really believe in the power company, uh, you can just disable it with set no swap file. Uh, and this is going to help a little bit with slow text paces as well as slow macros, like if you need to run a macro thousands of times. Another setting that you can do is set syntax equals off. Uh, that's going to speed it up a little bit more by disabling the syntax highlighting. Uh, obviously, this is a little bit extreme for some people because some can't live without syntax highlighting in their text editor. I know I sure like syntax highlighting. Um, and if you wanna set these settings back, then you can just set swap file, uh, and then you can also set syntax equals on. Um, now, don't stop the video here and think that this is all you need to do to uh, speed up pasting, because if I go to shift insert again, uh, you can see that it's going to take a little bit of time to still paste in. Uh, and there it goes. So it did shorten it a little bit, but it's it's probably still uh, not fast enough for it to be acceptable. So here is the absolute fastest way to paste text in Vim. Uh, you simply want to do double quote and then asterisk. So you can see uh, what it's doing right here. I'm in uh, normal mode. That's why it's not actually typing anything. And then the P button. And this instantaneously pasted in this sum, um, uh, what is it, 12,546 lines of text. So that command pastes from the system clipboard as well, uh, and it does it instantaneously. It's also a little bit easier to do on your keyboard than shift insert, at least in my opinion. Uh, but there are a couple of caveats to doing this, which is why I didn't just show this to you first. Uh, now Vim, in order to do this, has to be compiled with system clipboard access in order for it to work. Uh, if you're on a binary distro, then there's probably nothing for you to worry about. Most likely Vim was already compiled with that feature, but if you're on Gentoo, 
then you know what you got to do. You got to reemerge it with the right use flags. Uh, or if you built Vim from source without that functionality, then you're going to want to recompile it with that functionality enabled. Um, now let's talk about macros. So macros can really speed up your edits in Vim. Uh, they can automate a lot of stuff that might be annoying to do, but they can take a while when you have to run them thousands of times over, even if it's a fairly simple action uh, that the macro is taking. So let me demonstrate that for you. I'm going to write a line of text. This is a line of text. And I'm going to do some kind of macroing to it. So uh, let's see, start recording a macro and I'm going to yank this, put it on a line and I guess I'll insert some stuff at the beginning. And while I change some stuff at the end, let's see, this is a line of random strings that don't really have any context. Okay, and let's stop recording the macro. And now I'm gonna run it 1000 times. And so you can see, this is taking a few seconds to run. Uh, we're almost done, three quarters of the way. And there we go, now we're done. So uh, that's kind of annoying. And you know, we only ran it 1000 times. So again, imagine if you had to do this uh, 100,000 times, it would really suck and slow your day down. And the reason that this is taking so long is that Vim was redrawing the screen. So, you know, you saw it showing all of the text uh, that was basically being put in by the macro as it runs. And we don't really need that. I mean, it's basically a pointless feature unless you're just going to, I guess, have Vim be some background thing that's gonna do stuff for, I don't know, a prop or something. 99% of the time, it's gonna be useless. So what we can do is just disable that redrawing with set lazy redraw. Uh, and then it should be a little bit faster. So why don't we test that out? And so it's not going to do anything on the screen until the macro is actually done running. And there we go. So a little bit faster, um, maybe significantly faster. And again, it's going to scale um, if you need to run it like 100,000 times or anything like that. And the last tip that I'm gonna give you about Vim to speed things up is to just not install too many plugins. In fact, I would say to totally avoid plugins, stay away from them until you've been using Vim for at least a few months or however long it takes you to really understand all of the functionality of Vim and you're so comfortable with it that you're not opening Gedit or Nano or anything else, you're always going to Vim. Um, because a lot of people tend to install plugins that do stuff Vim is already able to do with its default functionality, which I think is really dumb and it's going to slow you down and bloat up your system. And if you're using Vim, that's probably not the direction that you wanna go in. Anyway, that's it for my tips to make Vim faster. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day.